I didn't really have that much to drink, did I? No. But I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. Not that I'm particularly looking forward to it, but I guess I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey, like that's not enough. I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. Last night's, um, uh, date is not something any of us should be reminded of, and I'm not just talking about the incident with the groping and me kicking him in the groin. Doesn't he get that no means no? No. What the fuck was your glitch last night, bitch? I'm sorry? What did you call me? I take you to a top-class club, wine you and dine you, and you slap me in the fucking face? Did you ask yourself why I slapped you, Zack? I don't fucking care. You'll regret fucking with me, bitch. I can promise you that. I'm sorry, Zack. Sorry? Sorry doesn't fucking cut it, April Ryan. You should have thought about the consequences of your actions before it was too late. You'll be sorry you ever crossed me. I'd call you a bastard if I didn't think you'd take it as a compliment. If I wasn't such a fucking nice guy, I'd smash your fucking face in, bitch. You're gonna be so fucking sorry you ever fucked with me, April fucking Ryan. Or water mains, perhaps. Or, ugh, sewer pipes. That would explain the smell. Caps never stop. She's gone. The boss man. From his uniform, I'd say he's one of the West Side Kings. They got recruitment posters all over town. Looks like he knows how to use that steel pipe. I think he's in trouble. Pretty. And considering the neighborhood, it's a miracle that it's still intact. Maybe it's bulletproof stained glass designed for inner city cathedrals. There's something about stained glass windows that immediately puts me in a spiritual mood. I wonder how they light those candles. Do they have ladders? Or jetpacks? That's a funky idea. Priests with rockets on their backs. That would give a whole new dimension to evening services. 
Maybe they're just holographic candles. It's a baby angel. A cherub? He's got a red robe wrapped around his posterior, and he looks to be in a hurry. I can't remember reading about this particular incident in the Bible. Maybe it was in the, um, the sequel? Nah, that came out only five years ago, and this wall painting looks a lot older than that. It's a wall painting featuring, amongst other things, a cherub and a long red robe. It's the confessional. It's been more than two years since my last confession, but... No. I'm not in a mood to be counting beads right now, and with my list of, um, shortcomings, I'll be counting beads for a very long time. No. Not today. It's a priest. Good morning. I'm Father Raoul. You're not a Hope Street regular, are you? I haven't seen you here before. I don't visit the neighborhood very often, no. And why should you? It's not a very nice place. This cathedral is all there's left of the hope in Hope Street. I'm sorry to hear that, Father. So am I. But we cope. We cope. How may I be of assistance? Do people still go to church? Yes, some do. Some do. Religion is pretty resilient. Religion, sure. But there's so many new religions, and people tend to abandon the old ones, don't they? They'll be back. The Voltex and the Manus of the world offer only a fleeting chance of material happiness. What they cannot offer is spiritual enlightenment. So you're not worried about the competition? We have over 2,000 years of experience and tradition to build on. I don't see us just rolling over on our backs and giving up. No. Do you know a boy named Warren Hughes? As a matter of fact, I do. The Hugheses were regulars before they traveled to the colonies. Poor Warren was left an orphan by his family. I haven't seen him for years. Where does Warren live? I'm not sure he lives anywhere. But he does belong to a Hope Street gang, the Razor Blades, I believe. They seem to conjugate just down the street in Building 87. Be careful, though. Although they're far from the worst gang around here, they're not a particularly friendly lot, and they don't care for strangers. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Still, be careful. Where did you say I could find Warren Hughes? Your best bet would be Building 87 just down the street. Thank you, Father. Please come by again if you're ever in the neighborhood. Seven. It's out of order. I think I'll just take the stairs. It's a boy. It looks to be about 15 or so. Can I talk to you for a minute? What's your name? What's yours? April Ryan. Lucky you. You know where I can find a kid named Warren Hughes? Who's asking? Um, I am. Warren Hughes? Never heard of him. Alright, well, I guess you can't help me. Nope. Nobody can. What do you mean? A nice, pretty girl like you in a neighborhood like this, asking all the wrong questions. You're heading for some serious trouble, you know. I can take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Sure you can. The thing is, there are four guys waiting downstairs for you to come back out, and they can take care of themselves real good. I'm not looking for trouble. Trouble found you, girl. Don't threaten me. I ain't threatening you, girl. 
I'm just telling you how it is. You're in deep shit and you've only got yourself to blame. I don't have any money. You think I want your money? Shit, you can keep your damn money. Just because I live in the projects don't mean I'm a thief, you know. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Of course not. People never do. What do you want from me? I should have asked you the same question. Except I don't care. You should have thought twice before coming after me. After you? I didn't come... So you're Warren. What? Like you didn't know? No. Cortez told me your name, where to find you, but... Hold on. Cortez? Old Spanish talking dude. Real crazy in the head? That's a fair description, yeah. Shit. You're not a cop. Social services? Corporate? No, no. I'm a... a friend of Cortez. He said to look you up. I haven't seen Cortez in a while. Not since before. So what does Senior Cortez want with me? We need some help. What kind of help? Look, I gotta stay incognito most of the time now that corporates and cops are stepping up their search for us. I can't go risking my ass for nobody. Not even Cortez. That's alright, I just need some information on a group called the Vanguard and their leader, Jacob McAllen. Oh, sorry. Never heard of those guys. You wouldn't have. They keep to themselves, and they got some kind of cover operation going, but I don't know what it is, and... You want... need to find out? All right, here's the thing. I got a friend who might be able to help you out. Great! Hold on. Before I use up my favors with him, I need you to do me a favor in return. Probably even help yourself out at the same time. Fair enough. What do I have to do? Easy. Break into the Newport Police Department computer archives. Get me some information on my family. Destroy my criminal record and get the hell out of there. Preferably alive. You want me to risk my life for a personal favor? If you don't do this for me, I won't help you out. Besides, there's probably some information on the... Uh, Vanguards, was it? In the archives. And that information will be valuable to my friend if he's going to help you out. No, it's too dangerous. Whatever. It's your loss. It's Warren Hughes. Artist and gangbanger. Interesting combo. Hi, Warren. Changed your mind? I'll do it. Smart decision. So here's the thing. My dad doped out on raps and seduced by commercials. Sold out our whole family to the shiny happy colonization program for a lifetime supply of the big R. The Rapture. He neglected to ask his lovely wife and children, and the corporates didn't care. One day they came to pick up my mom, my sister, and me. I got away though, snuck out the window, and I spent the next two weeks in a dumpster. And your family? That's just it. I don't know. Off to the colonies, of course, but which one? I don't know. Sometimes they split up families, too. You know, they don't tell you that in their ads. I don't give a shit about my dad, and, and my mom, she's tough. She can take care of herself, but I want my sister back. We were real tight. I'm not going to let him use her in the mines and factories out there. So, you want me to find out where they took your sister? That's it. You're catching on. You do that for me, and delete my criminal record at the same time to get them damn corporates off my ass. I'll give you all the help you need. What was it you wanted me to do again? Break into the police archives, get information on my family, delete my criminal record, and if you're smart, check out what they got on the vanguards, or whatever they're called. And then you'll put me in touch with your friend. He owes me one, yeah. And he can help you out with everything you need. Where's the police station? Take the subway to Metro West. You'll come out on what they call Cop Street. You'll see the NPD headquarters down the block. You can't miss it. How do I get to the police station again? Take the subway to Metro West. You'll see it. I'd better get going. Be cool, eh?
unfortunate victim of the Anglo-Pacific Wars of the 90s. I do all my grocery shopping at T-Rex. Not that their food is particularly good, nor their prices particularly low. I just love their ads. They're tray cool. Especially the one where they built an actual-sized robot dinosaur and sent it out to mangle a competing chain of grocery stores. For real! I don't know if anybody got hurt, but man, that campaign kicked ass! T-Rex. Proving once and for all that brute force advertising is the way to go. It's an automated garbage truck. They crisscross the town emptying containers and running people over. This is Lucinda Carlisle reporting live from just outside the Metro Precinct Police Station, and I bring you today a senseless and tragic display of technology gone wrong. In the carnage you see behind me, medical drones are digging through the rubble of a crashed shuttle for the remains of over 100 people who lost their lives today in an accident. That could and should have been prevented. Only hours ago, a brave new World Airlines shuttle, carrying starry-eyed colonists to the Metro Tower, experienced an engine failure. And came roaring down on this street, without warning, crushing three cars and burying nine innocent pedestrians and two would-be carjackers. The cause of this human tragedy? As of yet, there is no official report. We can only speculate, and speculate we will. Was the pilot drunk? Was he hopped up on Amethyn? Was someone aboard carrying a bomb? Did the manufacturers of the shuttle, Monster Limited, skimp on a part and import it from a bootleg factory in Germany? The truth could be any or all of the above. But whoever is responsible, and whatever the punishment, it won't bring any of those bloodied, mangled corpses to life. It won't bring Teresa Roseman, mother of three, back to her husband, Marty. That loss is forever. And a huge cash settlement can only ease the pain. It can never remove it altogether. Only expensive brain surgery or personality modification through proprietary drugs can do that. The exact death count is still under wraps, and work will continue throughout the day to identify the thousands of body parts that are being picked one by one from the twisted wreckage of BNWA Shuttle 709. What repercussions will this accident have on our city? Probably none. You fly a shuttle, you take your chances. This is Lucinda Carlisle, reporting live for the Metro Channel Action News. Back to you, Lisa and Dan. Are we clear? How did I do? Uh-huh. And what are the ratings? Five million? That's it? Five million? Jesus, we've lost out to reruns of Gillian's Island? What the fuck, Gregory? Why the hell did you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me any of that shit. You were the one who said this would broaden my audience. I, I should have stuck with the game shows. Jesus! It's a high-voltage laser perimeter fence. The color indicates that they're using military-grade lasers. If I'm not completely mistaken, and if I remember my tech classes correctly, that's an anti-gravity control unit. It looks fully intact. I can't pass through the fence without setting off the alarm, or worse, getting fried by that military-grade laser. It's a police officer. He's guarding the wreckage. Move along. There is nothing to see here. Except for you, officer. Hey? Me? 
I always did love a man in a uniform. Sorry, ma'am, but I'm gay. Now, move along. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Except for that crashed hovercraft. Nah. You see those everywhere these days. Sorry? Dime a dozen. Crashed hovercraft are a dime a dozen? Fifteen a week, ma'am. At the very least. In this city alone. But they say it's the safest mode of transportation available. Statistically, yes. Unless you're aboard one of the buggers. Then your chance of survival drops drastically. What? They're the safest mode of transportation, if you stay on the ground. The chances of being hit by one going down are relatively low. Thanks for ruining my trust in modern technology. We're here to protect and serve. Isn't it the other way around? Just keep it moving, ma'am. Nothing to see here. Except for the escaped convict right behind you. I'm on special duty today, ma'am. So that escaped convict will have to take care of himself. After all, who'd guard this perimeter in my absence? Um... Uh, me? I'll be good. That was a rhetorical question, ma'am. You are not qualified. Now, move along. Nothing to see here. Except... I won't tell you again, so move along. There is absolutely nothing to see here. Nothing. Jeez, don't you people have anything better to do? <coughs> Are you feeling all right, officer? Thank you, ma'am. I'm fine. All the dust from the debris is just choking me up. Doors are closed. Newport Police Department. It's a holographic sign. It's a police officer. He's guarding the entrance. Hey! How do I get into the station? That is the question, is it not? Pardon? To get in, or not to get in? That is the question. Good grief, more weirdos. Who? Oh, I'm not a weirdo. I'm an actor. No offense, but isn't that an oxymoron? Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. Why are you parading back and forth like that? I am practicing the fine art of policing. It doesn't look like policing. It looks like acting. Bollocks! And I thought I was making progress. Maybe if you tried being a little less... rigid? Yeah, but it's this bloody suit! It makes everyone move the same way. I'm not able to release the character. Are you an actor? Or a cop? Both, darling. Both! I am an actor, but I will portray an officer of the law in my next motion picture. It's called Mad Cop 2. I play the mad cop's friend, the somewhat ticked off cop. I think I saw the first one. It stunk. I agree. But this one has a certain uh, je ne sais quoi, flair, that the original lacked. You mean more violence, more sex, less plot? That's it. So you're doing research for your next role? Indeed, my fair maiden, I am. I have been assigned to a squad to capture the essence of Her Majesty's honorable service. And what squad would that be? Vice. How do I get into the station? You don't. Not today. But I need to get in. What if there's been a crime? Good point. I guess you need to report it via one of the many kiosks installed throughout the city, or by contacting an officer of the law. Like yourself? I am but a humble servant of Her Majesty, and I'm actually assigned to Vice, so don't bother. Any chance you'll let me through? 
Shower me with sweet forgiveness, princess, but unfortunately, I cannot. The doors ain't working. The doors aren't working? They're not. Good lord, I must report this immediately, after I'm done with my policing exercise. Did you say the doors weren't working? Ah, correct. The only things getting in and out of the station today are police officers, prisoners, and garbage. Aren't they all pretty much one and the same thing? Cutting words from a wench's barbed mouth? What did you call me? Hmm, sweet princess. That's more like it. How are you able to bring garbage out and prisoners in when the doors are broken? These doors don't work. But the gate downstairs does, of course. You can only get through that inside of a vehicle. The security measures are quite extreme. Why like cow extreme? Can you say radiation poisoning? Thanks, and good luck. Ah, uh, parting is such sweet sorrow. Farewell, princess. Till we meet again, farewell. It's either a cop pretending to be an actor, or the other way around. I'm not completely sure. He's equally bad at both. It's a garbage container, and it's mostly empty, save for a couple of sticky old newspapers and bottles. This is so gross. And me in my favorite shirt. Hey, is that a fermin? Oh, no. It's dead rat. I'm not gonna check out that other mitten in the corner. I think it just moved. How utterly, utterly pointless is this? And I'm starting to reek a little of oh crap too. routine and a total waste of time. I mean, what's gonna happen? The truck doesn't even pass by this container. It's your garden variety robotic roadblock. You see them all over this pothole infested town. There's a small control panel on it. The display reads, Three zero one eight. It says Threadbare Lane, MCW, and the street ID number is thirty eighteen. It says Calavera Crossing, MCW, and the street ID number is double zero ninety two. If I try entering the idea of the intersecting street, the roadblock will move.
yourself. That was so gross. The things I do to save the world, I mean that smell, that sticky stuff, the way that rat just wouldn't let go. Disgusting. Not to mention the fact that I really, truly stink. I don't think this is ever coming off. I'm gonna stink like fish heads and moldy pizza for the rest of my sorry life. There's no way I'm going back down into the basement. I'd rather be rolled out of here on a gurney with my body wrapped in black plastic. You can usually tell a crook by his eyes and his foul behavior. Tuvok? From my extensive knowledge of cop shows, I'd say she's probably the desk sergeant on duty. For some reason, they're always slightly overweight and grumpy. the front desk sergeant. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, what can I do for you? <laughs> Where are the archives? The archives? You're not an officer of the law, are you? Yes, yes I am. If you're a cop, where the hell's your uniform? Your badge? Your standard issue disruptor pistol? At home. They're all at home. Then I suggest you get your cute little butt home and get your badge, your uniform, and your gun. Capiche? Now, shoo, leave the grown-ups to do the grown-up work, okay? About the archives. You're not an officer of the law, are you? I'm in training at the academy, and I need to get into the archives to... study. You're in training? Uh-huh, sure you are. Then what the hell you doing here? You should be at the academy doing push-ups and learning how to bullshit like a pro. About the archives. You're not an officer of the law, are you? So what if I'm not? Then you can't go into the back, capiche? Cops only. Besides, half the doors in this building, including that one, are out of order. Nobody's going in, nobody's coming out. And until those overpaid, underworking service guys get off their butts and back to work, that's the way it's gonna stay. Thanks anyway. The doors are closed. They don't open manually. The panel is closed. <coughs> Completely secured. I can't open it. <laughs> it's a thin guy wearing red coveralls. He looks like a repairman. It's a repairman. Hiya! Huh? You an angel from heaven come to take me away? No point talking to old Georgie there. Ever since he overdosed on raptures, he ain't been right in the head. I don't ever let him hold the hammer no more either, I'll tell you that. It's a, um, portly fellow, wearing red coveralls. I think he's a repairman. He's a repairman. Hi! <laughs> what do you want? We're on our lunch break, honey. Excuse me, how do I smell? Smell? Are you coming on to me, honey? What? I don't know. Women don't usually come on to me, so I'm I'm just checking. I wouldn't want to miss a come on. I asked you how I smelled. <laughs> yeah, right. Um like uh moldy pizza and um is that salmon? Smoked. Yeah. And a faint touch of rum. I had an accident with a bottle inside a garbage container. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. You're not alone. In fact, there are meetings downtown every Wednesday night. I don't have a drinking problem. <laughs> if you can't admit it to yourself, honey, you do. After all, who's the one reeking a rum? Not me, that's for sure. <laughs> not today, anyway. Why aren't you guys working? 
we're on our contractually bound lunch break. Uh huh. Right. But you're not eating. We're done eating, sure. But we're still on our break. Clause 16 of the contract, and I quote, improper digestion may prove detrimental to further work-related activities. End quote. Meaning what? We're letting the corned beef settle, honey. Aren't you supposed to fix the doors? That's right. But instead you're just... <coughs> sitting here. That's right. <coughs> And you're not planning on getting back to work anytime soon? That's right. And you're not bothered by this? That's right. I could say anything, anything at all. That's right. And you just answer? <laughs> that's right. Well, how's that for productivity? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's right. It'd be so nice if you could fix the doors. And it would be so nice if you could go away and leave us alone. Is there anything I can do to make you go back to work? <laughs> no. Short of emergency, we ain't moving our asses in the foreseeable future. What constitutes an emergency? Any event accompanied by a specific work order signed in triplicate. What kind of work order? Ah, well, you know. About the work order... <laughs> yeah? Which one? You know, for emergencies. You mean the short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits requisition form? Uh, sure. Well, if you were to produce said requisition with the appropriate signatures, we'd be forced to prematurely suspend our lunch break, for tactical reasons, of course. <laughs> Thus allowing our scheduled work to be completed. Don't you just love bureaucracy? You what? Never mind. Where do I go to get the requisition form? What form? <laughs> the requisition form for the short-term tactical suspension of... Uh... Of union member benefits. Any official office for which we perform services. Enjoy your lunch break, guys. With the Sunday overtime we're getting? You betcha, honey. Excuse me, ma'am. You again? What do you want now? I need the requisition form called Short-Term Tactical Suspension of Union Members' Benefits. <laughs> all right, all right. What's the number? <coughs> number? I need to know the identification number of that form. You know, the five-digit alphanumerical ID. Aren't those documents arranged alphabetically? Yeah, yeah, they are, but I still need a number. <laughs> Capiche? About that requisition form. Identification number? I don't have an identification number. I just know the name of the requisition. It's... No, can't help you without an ID number. Rules are rules. <laughs> I'm sorry, but doesn't this situation strike you as disturbingly Kafkaesque? Nah. It's more of a Burmanian pastiche on a Kafkaesque theme. My unwillingness to yield is less a bureaucratic necessity than a petty desire to transfer the burden of my miserable existence onto others. Uh, right. What you said. Thanks anyway. <coughs> it's a toolbox. There's a sheet of paper in here. Some kind of requisition form or work order. <laughs> Bokama Mercer Corporate Labor Union, form number 09042. Short term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. It's a carbon copy of an old work order. There it is, 09042. That's the number the desk sergeant wanted. That's the requisition from last week. What a horrible experience that was. I pray each and every night that we'll never have to sacrifice our lunch break again. You keep it, okay? Seeing that form again sickens me. Excuse me, ma'am. 
You again. What do you want now? I need a requisition form number 09042. Short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. <sighs> Hold on. <coughs> Here you go, miss. <laughs> Union requisition form number 09042. <laughs> Bokamba Mercer Corporate Labor Union, form number 09042. Short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. The work order's blank. I better forge, ooh, uh, fill out this work order first. The damn doors! Sign the commission. There. <coughs> now we're set. What's this? Oh, just a jolly little requisition entitled Short-Term Tactical Suspension of Union Members' Benefits. Say what? Lady, do you realize what you've just done? You've interrupted our lunch break. This is an official work order. It can't be. Wait. 09042. This isn't 09042-A, is it? Uh, no. Just plain old 09042-nothing. Ha-ha! <laughs> This being Sunday and all, that petition is useless. On public holidays, you need the extension dash A form. Addendum for public holidays. Us being on triple overtime and all. So? So, we're gonna stay here and enjoy our extended break. Thank you very much. Now go away. Excuse me, ma'am. You again, what do you want now? I'm sorry, but I need the 09042-A requisition form addendum as well. The what? The 09042-A? Why the hell didn't you ask me for that one in the first place? <laughs> because I'm a cruel bitch and I love torturing you. In fact, I've made it my life's mission to haunt you forever and ever with requests for useless forms and documents. Hmm, hold on. All right, requisition form number 09042-A. And that better be it. Bokamba Mercer Corporate Labor <laughs> Union, form number 09042-A. Short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. Public holiday addendum. Okay, now we're set. I hope. Why do you keep bothering us? <laughs> Don't you have anything better to do? No, absolutely not. This is requisition form number 09042-A, the short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits requisition form with the public holiday addendum. Balls! <laughs> We've been nailed, George. Get your ass off the chair. We're going back to work, thanks to this lovely young lady. Old vid phone, ancient, ancient technology. Officials are so passe. The screen and camera are both out of order, I think. I haven't spoken with mom since I... since I left, actually. 
I should give her a ring. Hello? <coughs> Hi, Mom? <gasps> it's April. How are you? Where are you, sweetheart? In the city, Mom. You know that. Why didn't you call? We've been... I've been worried sick about you, sweetheart. Didn't you get my letter? <laughs> yes, and I can't say I understand why. Well, that was the problem, wasn't it? You didn't understand. I don't think it was fair of you to be so hard on your father. You hurt him a lot, you know? And I'm not just talking about you pushing him down the stairs. And what about me? You don't think he hurt me? Were you so blind you didn't see that? <coughs> April, you know I can't take sides in this. No. Of course not. Not you. Not ever. Anyway, how is... Is Dad doing okay? I mean, after the fall. He broke his arm and he had to take some time off work. Money short because of that. We had to pull Danny out of school until next semester. You can't blame me for those things, Mom. If you hadn't left like you did... I'd probably be dead now, Mom. I couldn't take it anymore. Please, let's not argue about this now. I just wanted to... <coughs> I just wanted to hear your voice. <coughs> Please come home, April. We still love you. No. Thank you, but no. That's not gonna happen. Listen, I have to go. I'm in the middle of... something. Take care, okay? <coughs> okay, sweetheart. I love you. Yeah, me too, Mom. Bye. At least they're doing something, even if it's just staring at the panel. <coughs> Good to see you up and about, George. Mister! Mister! The plane! The plane! <laughs> Good to see you up and about, George. The ants. They're everywhere. There are ants in my pants. Good to see you up and about, George. I'd love some green eggs and ham, wouldn't you? Good to see you up and about, George. What's the deal with those spaceship dinners, huh? I mean, they taste like hospital food. Good to see you up and about, George. They never quit. They quality assure everything. I can't take a pee without quality assurance standing behind me, checking off boxes and taking urine samples. Good to see you up and about, George. I think this may be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Good to see you up and about, George. <laughs> no. Are you guys going to be done soon? Hey, who knows? This is complicated stuff, honey. <coughs> How's it going? Eh... <coughs> uh... It's a vid phone. This phone, 099-12090. Busy. What a surprise. There's a phone call for you. For me? Who is it? I think it might be union business. Out of my way, lady! <laughs> Good to see you up and about, George. Ah, to be young again. And also a robot.
There's a call for you too, sir. Me? I get no calls ever. Except from my mommy. <coughs> Is it my mommy? Uh, it could very well be your mommy. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Got them fooled good. The panel is open and some wires are hanging out. Wires. One red, one blue. It's a long shot, but if I try to cross these wires... Voila! I'm so good. <laughs> hey! You can't go back there! It's a restricted area! I need to distract her, but how? Let's see. What's the most difficult form to get a hold of? <coughs> the label on that shelf says, Reporting Indecent or Lewd Behavior by Bingo or BM Personnel, number 31366. Excuse me, ma'am. You again? What do you want now? I'd like that form for complaining about lewd and indecent behavior, please. Number? 31366. <laughs> Hold on. <coughs> Bingo! The world's favorite soda. And after the devastating soda wars of 2159, the world's only soda. It's a bingo soda machine. $1.50 for a can of the world's favorite soft drink. Considering the fact that I'm inside a police station, it might be prudent to pay for the soda first. Let's see. Cola, lemon, lime, lemon lime, strawberry, strawberry lime, strawberry cola, cherry cola. Yuck! I'll go with the old standby, bingo classic. Boring, but safe. One soda's plenty enough. Archives. It's a retinal scanner, instantly outdated by the genetic scanner, but I guess here they don't care. I don't think so. The security feedback will probably fry my eyeballs. Locker room. The showers. Unisex, of course. I could use a shower. Uh, no. It's occupied. Hi! Who's in there? Manoe. Who's asking? God, I know that voice. What? Who are you? Agent Scully, FBI. You'll be wanting the chief's office then. That's down the hall. Oh, my God. Pain. Hello? Who is it? Pizza delivery. Oh, God, don't mention pizza. Christ. Hello? Who is it? It's me! Oh, hey, hey, wait! I know that voice. Identify yourself. 
Uh, um, I gotta run. Hey, hold it, come back. Oh my god, that hurts. Hello? Who is it? Nobody. Who is... Oh my god. Somebody kill me. And Ellie's in there. Sergeant Frank Manelli. Sergeant Russell Franco. Sergeant Ricky Mahoney. Sergeant Maria Hernandez. Sergeant Morty Lowe. Sergeant Anthony McDonald. Hello? Who is it? Sergeant Hernandez. Maria. Thank God you're here. Listen, I need you to get my stomach medicine from the locker. Here's the key. Oh, oh God. It's the key to Frank Minnelli's locker. Fast relief for a runny tummy. It's a receptacle for a synthetic eye. I guess Frankie Boy's using one of those babies. You can never tell from looking at him. It's a receptacle for a synthetic eye. It's empty, so he must be using it. Sergeant Manelli's been banging this locker shut one too many times. Say hello to seven years of bad luck, guy. That sure makes me feel a whole lot better about harassing him. It's broken. It's a loose shard of the mirror glass. I'll just carefully separate this shard from the mirror. Like so. I'll have to be careful carrying this around. Archives login. F. Minnelli. Password, wife's birthday. What a smart boy. Real security whiz. Archives login. F. Minnelli. Password, wife's birthday. <laughs> Hello? Maria, you got my medicine? Yep, got it right here. Well, slide it under the door, will you? Hurry. Tummy ooh ah, fast relief for a runny tummy. Ugh. Oh, thank God, thank God. Uh. How are you feeling? Better. A little better. I need it. I think... This medicine is flushing out my system a little, you know what I mean? It's accelerating the natural process. Achoo! 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 No need to go any further, sir. Thanks, Maria. Hey, you got a cold or something? You sound different. Yeah, a cold or... I got something, all right. How's Mrs. Minnelli doing? Why are you asking? I didn't think it... Oh, hell, Maria, we spoke about this. I told you I... Can't you just let it rest? Uh, sure, sorry. Just... wondering. I wish you wouldn't, Maria. You know how... It is what it is, you know? About Mrs. Minnelli. God damn it, Maria, I'm on the freaking can, yeah? I was just thinking, maybe I should get her a birthday present. What do you think? Are you nuts? Have you gone completely nuts? What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Being nice? Nice! You want Laura to kick me out of my own apartment? Is that it? You want my wife to kick me out of the apartment tomorrow? Tomorrow? Your wife's birthday's tomorrow? 
you're not buying her a present, Maria. Don't even think about it. That would be such a big mistake. You don't want to make a mistake like that. Okay, boss. You're the boss. Don't call me boss. And would you leave me alone? I'm not in a sociable mood. Hell, I'm on the can. Gotta go, Manelli. Thanks for your help, Maria. Jesus, I think I'm allergic to the goddamn medicine. Oh, crap, my eye! It's Frank Minnelli's synthetic eye. Hey, leave my eye alone! There you are. Back in your slot. It's a light switch. Crap, my eye! What the hell happened to my... Maria! Maria, did you take my eye? Give it back! There you are. Back in your slot. I think one of his eyes is falling out. The eye came loose. Poor Constable Guybrush. Sorry, Guybrush, but I need to borrow your eye for a while. Monkey see, monkey do. Well, not without this he won't. Oh, crap, my eye! There you are. Back in your slot. Oh, God, I'm seeing red. I'm having a stroke. Maria, Maria, go get the doctor fast. I'm seeing red. I think it'd be smart just to get the hell out of here. Frank Minnelli's synthetic eye. I'm just, um, borrowing it. He'll get it back. <laughs>